Welcome back to Franchise Hockey Manager 11 with the Philadelphia Flyers. We begin the 2027-2028 season uh, looking back at how well we've done over the past couple of years. Um, last year, we unfortunately didn't win, but we got knocked out by the eventual winners, so not too bad, I will say. But we did manage to get uh, 54 wins, which is the most that we've gotten so far. I mean, total tally is uh, 138 and 92 and 16 overtime losses. So despite the first year where we didn't really do great, didn't really do too bad, um, a little bit better than what was necessarily expected. We almost finished around 500, but uh, still managed to get some decent picks. Um, taking a look at the roster now, um, we'll look at another view as well. Michkov is still four star, four and a half or five star potential. And then Demidov is three star, Luchenko's uh, three and a half. And then we also have uh, a goalie that looks like Carson looks like he could be the real deal. Um, already 1.5, um, and his skating and reflexes look pretty good. Um, positioning, glove and rebound, all starting to look pretty good. I think he could develop if we end up uh, at least starting him a couple games this season, if we can. Or at least paying, playing the preseason. I don't think we can send him anywhere other than the AHL. Um, but development, it looks like he should be pretty good. Um, as long as we can end up starting him. I don't even know what uh, all-star game for the CHL prospect. It's the only thing that he, he's known for. We'll take a quick look back. Uh, we did get him with our second round pick, but that wasn't uh, me. That was Danny Barrier before um, I took over. And then we also have Ivan R Rabkin. Rabkin? Rabkin? Don't even know how to say his name properly. But uh, we ended up sending him on loan last year. He managed to get... Uh, 38 or sorry 33 points and eight goals so he's more of a more of a setup guy maybe in an up and down winger but uh, I think he's gonna kind of go into his own over the next uh, season we're definitely gonna play him uh, we do need centers and he's definitely uh, one of the guys that uh, might do it we could find ourselves getting rid of uh, Kolosov as well just to bring in uh, uh, Carson and then uh, we also have Oki as well, but he's only a one star. And uh, we do have a decent pipeline, at least for, for those players. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, our transactions as well. Um, transaction log, we did manage to sign all these players. Um, Morgan Frost, we ended up extending. Oki, we extended. Demidov, we extended for 4.2. Uh, Southrin, uh, three years. He still hasn't played for us. Bonk as well for three years for 1.5, Spencer Gill for three and a half, and then uh, Carson for three more years um, at 1.2. Luchenko, we managed to get for 4.7. Now, if you end up looking at the cap obligations, Scott Lawn's probably playing his last season with us. Faraby wants 7 million. I don't think we can really do that. Cates wants a big improvement as well. I think he wants at least five. Uh, Forster is around the same between five and, and seven. Um, Rizzo, I didn't take a look, but he's only two stars, so we probably will move on from him. Devin Barkey, I didn't even look at that. I will gladly take that. I'm not even going to try and negotiate him down. He is definitely worth that. And then even in terms of defenders, Cam York wants a sizable amount, but we have a decent amount of people uh, coming up, so I don't think I'm going to necessarily do that. I'd rather see what uh, what um, Frege ends up doing, uh, but we'll jump into the draft. I don't think we really signed anyone uh, that was a free agent. Some of them looked okay. Um, McCann we couldn't get. Um, we did make an offer for Taron Smith. I think he's the lone guy that we're looking at just because he's an improvement on lefty and obviously if we get him uh, there's no need for us to really uh, sign um, probably Cam York I'd say. Especially if we can get him for, for a much cheaper amount. He's already at the same level that he's he's at currently. But we'll end up doing the drafts. We don't really have that many players, so it's going to be a very quick draft. Uh, Bar Barky might uh, end up signing. And, yeah, McCann's definitely not going to re-sign with us. He still wants too much. 6.6 .6 at this point. I know that in the previous uh, previous game that if you end up waiting a little bit longer, it usually doesn't, uh, doesn't have any effect. You can usually get them for a decent discount. I don't really rate this trade very well but sure William Carlson all right how much 
two years, 5.6, I don't think I can do it. If he's still available, I might, I might uh, have a look. So we'll end up doing the last couple ones. So already looks like Toronto's going to get a better pick than Chicago. So the bottom five, Toronto's going to get number one, is aren't they? Now, Toronto gets second. So despite uh, despite what I said before about uh, Matthews possibly ruining the, their lottery pick, they managed to still get the second. It's going to show how many picks we have. I think we only have three. But I'll take a look at our depth as well just before the draft. And tons of trades now surfacing. Um, yeah, so we have a first, a second, a fourth, and a sixth. So we actually have more than what I thought. But uh, team needs possibly center. Maybe. I think we should be fine for maybe right wing now at this point. I think Eklund could be the guy, uh, Nicholas or um, Olsen. So I don't think it's a huge need, but it'd be nice to have it. Left wing, I think we're completely set. I think Owen Tippett, Luchenko, and even Demidov could play there as well. Um, yeah, Cates is gone. Lawton's gone. And then uh, we have Igor Surin and uh, Rizzo is probably gone as well. So maybe left left or right D. Seth Jones we might have to part ways with. We'll have to look at our contract situation. Um, and then Spencer Gill we did extend as well. So taking a look at the monthlies, it does look like we should still be fine. I think we should still be fine this season and then technically next season as well. So no no risk there we'll take a look at the draft and see who's available jacobson looks looks already prime he better be second overall 19th pick oh my god if if we can trade for that uh or if he's still even available i think he goes that'd be amazing uh we'll go first pick i think lupon is going to be at lupon no doubt I feel as though Jacobson has to be second. Brock Crisp. Four and a half. He's projected to be fourth. That seems like a botched pick. Sunberg. Ah, it looks all right. Five star potential. Pick number 12, though, so they're not even going in order. And then. Looks like a. Sounds German, but I don't think he is. He's American. Minnesota High School. Projects to be 22nd, so I don't know where all these uh, all these picks are looking at. But we'll do next pick again. Aiden Bouchard. I don't know if I want to trade this high up, but it's starting to look like I want to. I kind of want to trade for... For one of the next ones, just to be able to get uh, Jacobson. So I'll do pick till human. If he's, where did he end up going? I was going to say, if he was still available, I would definitely get him. So he did end up going to the Predators. So I'll accept that for sure. Goalie is the next top pick. Like I said, we don't lean left wingers. And then somehow they all keep flocking here. Um, Lucas here, 25th overall. And we're in 29th. So I'm curious to see where everyone's coming. We don't necessarily need a center. He is 11th overall projected. Again, we don't need goalies. But his determination and professionalism is pretty crazy. 101, so you might get him with a, a later pick. I don't think we're really needing for... We're really hurting for goalies. I think we're going to grab the defender. Yeah, one star already. I'll do that. Pick until human. D4 was next. Okay, now it's just goalies. Wenberg. Again, we don't really need a left winger. He's an up and down winger at the moment. 39th overall. Could take a chance there. Santella. Three star. His physicals don't look like they're really really anything more than physicals but his offensive rating looks good i i'd rather a defensive forward if we're going to go for any forward it's going to be more of a defensive rated one there's a right d 
Isaac Johansson. I mean, his mental ratings look pretty bad. But there does look... Like, his offensive looks really good. Like, he's more of a shooter. Pick 66. He's 18. You know what? I'm going to take a chance on him. And if there's somehow a goalie available, I might take take it now. Santella is still available. He's 65th. We're now in the fourth round. Louis Cross. German for 111. Temperament looks good, but everything else just kind of looks a bit mid. Ability-wise, there's still a Dagene has to improve at that point. And Carlson. Checking looks good, getting open. He could, his physicals look pretty good. Mental is a little bit uh, lax. Left and right wing. Simon Carlson. Might want to take a chance on him. Yeah, I'll take I'll take uh, Sam Carlson a little bit early, but I'll still take him. So next is sixth round pick, and now we'll go based purely on potential. There's another Carlson, Louis Carlson. His face offs are pretty good. Bio, no, he's not related to the other one. Project to be 118 pick. Center, though, that can play left wing. Only two and a half star. I think anyone that we end up getting are going to be two and a half star. Um, yeah, I think he's probably our best bet, actually. Unless Sterling kind of pops off here. Stick checking, okay. Professionalism. He's 113, so they're around the same mark. And then Yohani. His determination is very high, so... That kind of shows you, but the rest of his stuff doesn't really jump out. I'd rather take him as like a free agent, if anything, but uh, Louis Carlson will take as well. So two Carlsons. And I think that's going to be it. And it does look like this guy. 140. Fall from grace. So I'm going to take him. I'm going to actually sign him. Just because of his his potential, he could be worth something. I don't think we need to do it for the goalie. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at how well we end up doing in the draft. I would be absolutely shocked if we somehow managed to get the best draft. But uh, it's probably going to go to Nashville. I think that Jacobson's probably, probably a sleeper for sure. Especially in the first round too. If he fell to us, that would have been a... A great acquisition, but unfortunately, they end up grabbing him before. And I don't think it's really a normal thing for for a team like ours to probably push so hard for a for a prospect. So I think we will we'll let it lie at this point. Uh, we do sign Taron Smith though, so I will gladly accept that. And okay, we're probably gonna. Oh no, Carlson's there. So let's see, draft order and evaluation. No, that's for next year. Review. There we go. So they still projected us as one of the better drafts, probably because we got the left and right D, and then Carlson. We went kind of, we went almost all Swedish. So two Carlsons and a uh, Isaac Jansen. Well, Isaac Jansen looked pretty good. Not going to lie. Worth the risk for sure. He could be an offensive defenseman, but could pair very well with uh, Cackler. And Cackler already looks like he's... He, he looks like he's primed to be a, a bigger player than what they're saying at the moment. 25th overall, we did pretty good for that. And uh, we'll jump to the start of the season, and let's see what this, uh, what this team's going to look like.
Now we get ready to start the season, and just looking at it, it does look like Dallas is once again the favorites. I don't see the current champions anywhere. Tampa Bay's never to be found in terms of the most likely to win, so that's pretty good for us. Um, and I was kind of right. I think it was the only chance that they really had to, to win. And then um, also Red Wings in New Jersey look like they're um, prime candidates as well. We're not mentioned once again, even though uh, we did have the best record last season. And uh, I wouldn't say our team got much worse um, since the beginning of last season anyways. Um, Edmonton's also the dark horse with Connor McDavid uh, most likely to uh, push them into contender status. He's 30 years old, though. So if he doesn't, it's like win now or never at this point, because once you start to get into those twilight years, I kind of doubt that Edmonton's really going to be able to uh, to offer much. You have Dreisaitl and McDavid as their two best players, but they do have uh, Breck Litsky and Sam O'Reilly. But even then, it doesn't look like uh, they can really offer as much, at least not even this season. I don't really even consider them to be a contender, so I'm surprised that they are. Obviously, those two players are the better ones, but it just shows balance and then rebuild next year. So that doesn't, to me, that doesn't really scream that you're going to be the best in the league. Um, but uh, again, um, Dreisaitl, Pasternak, and uh, McDavid are primed for it. Pasternak's also 31. Dreisaitl's 31. Dreisaitl, Dreisaitl's older than McDavid. I didn't really know that. Maybe I did, actually, because he was probably drafted the year before. Um, Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes, and Rosmus Dahlin are most likely to be the top defensemen. And then goalies are Ottinger, Shesterkin, and Stuart Skinner. I never thought I'd see Stuart Skinner in that uh, contention, considering how bad he's been as of recent, in re even in the real world. So surprised that uh, he'd be considered that. Goals against... Yeah, goals against is almost... Pretty much three, I'd say, on average over the last couple seasons. So it does uh, does make you question that. Um, quick look at uh, any of the transactions that we did. Obviously, we end up signing all their players, but uh, we did end up getting Dylan McKinnon, my, uh, Marcus Kiersey as well, and then we end up signing the uh, the drafted player. We sent him, or the undrafted player, we sent him immediately on loan to the WHL, and already he's around 65 grade. I do think he could develop into something, but even if he ends up uh, just being a player that we end up getting rid of over the next couple years because we have his contract, definitely something that we'll do. Um, but uh, Dylan McKinnon, I did like him coming in the draft, and uh, a couple seasons ago. He is only a one star, but two and a half star potential. He's also one of those things that I could easily see ourselves um, just profiting him off of him later on, but also it can improve our uh, our D situation just in terms of uh, AHL. So probably, probably bottom line though of the AHL, but it still helps our team uh, compete a little bit. We didn't end up doing any, uh, any trades. We did end up getting Taron Smith as well. Taron Smith looks pretty good. Um, he's probably going to be our bottom line defense, uh, most likely. I don't even know how he was available. He was uh, drafted third round by Ducks, but apparently they didn't want to sign him. Or he didn't want to sign with them, but his puck handling and shooting range looked pretty good. Um, so we'll take a look at uh, what our roster is going to be like going into the season. So I do want to switch off. Uh, Demidov, I want to play on the left wing. And I don't know why Cates is there. Kate's also wants uh, more money. Devin Barkey, we did uh, end up extending as well. And then Owen Tippett, I think, is still under contract for 6 or $7 million a year. Frost, we re-signed as well. So Misa, uh, Rubkin is uh, going to be third-line center. Benson feels though he should be a little bit higher up. Kate's, I'm okay with being towards the bottom. And Forster is... Definitely going to be a, a fourth line uh, player as well. But I do think Benson should play a little bit higher up. I'm just not sure where to put him. Since Faraby looks like he's out, can uh, Misa can play right wing as well. We're going to start it off with this. Left and right wing. Benson's going to come in as the third line 
and Ripken's going to start off as our fourth line just to see uh, how things go. Sanheim and Drysdale are going to be our top line. Smith is now slotting in on our second line with Jones. So Russian uh, rushing defense and uh, two way defenseman, and then Andre and uh, Gill are going to be our bottom ones there. Um, Southern might end up coming up, and Prudhomme might come up at some point. Two star um, with could be four star potential. Uh, Surin's still going to be down there. He's only two stars, and our team's already good. Um, Massimo Rizzo ends up uh, getting sent down as well. Powell looks like he. He could be good next year. I think we'll end up uh, having to sign him next year. He is uh, going to be a three-star player. But I think his potential is going to change uh, throughout this year for sure. And then we still have $14 million in cap space. And this season we'll have to decide uh, whether or not we end up extending Therabee. I think we might. $7 million over six years. It will make him one of the more expensive players. I think we can sell him after two. Forster, five million. Won't even bother negotiating. That should be fine because we still have a five million dollar difference even between that. Cam York, Cam York. We might. I don't want to let him go though. Offer new contract. He wants five million. He is twenty six. Five million. I don't see him getting better, but he could be. I th I, I see us keeping him over Andre, and he does have a more cap friendly. Uh, I think Seth Jones is probably gone after this year, so we could we could very well do it, but we'll do it later on in the season, um, as well. Taron Smith, I feel as though it's gonna be the guy to really worry about this season. But if I had to guess, I would say Toronto's going to bounce back. I feel as though Utah's, unless they stop trading, they're probably not going to end up doing anything, but I feel as though they might have a good year this year. So we end up signing Farabee, and we'll take a look at the contract situation for next year as well. Um, Romanov, no one's going to want him. And Toronto is actually very active as well, so I kind of take that back. Because even just looking at their transactions, look at just their trades. That is a lot of trades for one season, or for one off season. I don't see them doing that well. But I did, do know that they mentioned that there's a, a trade bug for sure. But they are very active. They're probably even more active than us. So say say what you will. I don't think they're going to do as as good then. Maybe I take that back. I think there's too much disruptive uh, things happening there. And for goalie situation, I, I do see a situation where we might bring up uh, one of the youngsters, but I think we're still kind of feeling everything out. Um, we don't have our players currently at the top potential anyways, so I'm not too concerned. We're still kind of in a rebuild. Even though we did win one, I still consider ourselves to be more of a of a rebuild now than necessarily let's get 30-year-old uh, players and um, make our team unstoppable. But again, the focus is Michkov, and uh, he is still only four stars at this moment, so he can definitely improve even more. And I'm really, really excited to see uh, what he can bring to us uh, this year. I think with uh, building around him with Devonov as well is going to be huge. I think he might... Uh, he might jump on the, the top line for us as well at some point. I think uh, he'll surpass Tippett. So first game of the season, we shut out. That's a good start. Frost, Misa, and Cates all getting on the score sheet there. I did see Barky got an assist as well. I don't know. He's, he's definitely uh, probably one of my favorite players of this, uh, this save that you just didn't expect anything from. And I... I can honestly say I overlooked him right off the bat, but I, I always hate doing back-to-back -back games. And Kolosov will get his first start. And does it look like Cam York is now playing? Yeah, it does look like... 
does look like Cam York might be the, the bottom one. Andre might be the, the odd man out. It might end up, uh, yeah, we may part ways with him and, and sign him. But his contract is uh, is pretty enticing, I will say that. 5-3 win. Uh, you do have Tippett. Eichel is surprisingly on Florida Panthers, though. So Barkey gets his first goal. Tippett and Demidov um, getting goals as well. Does make it so that uh, Washington gets their first win, but doesn't look like it's going to be a, a year for them with uh, Ovechkin not being on their team anymore. I don't think uh, we're going to have to worry about them producing for for at least the next little while. Um, and Pittsburgh, I would be absolutely shocked if, uh, if Crosby ends up winning this year. Surin ends up having a good night. I mean, I, I really hope he does develop into something. Considering we did give up something for him, that was one of our first transactions, so it would be nice to see uh, see him do well. Tampa now, the team that ended up knocking us out. Let's see how good they are this year. 6-2 loss. That is not what we want to see. Um, Kucherov lights out. He is currently 34. And he has two two seasons left. He would be okay with coming to us, but I don't think we would make that trade ever. Uh, Tippett gets a goal there, and Michkov gets his first. Took a little bit longer than what I was hoping, but six two loss is not uh, it's not ideal, especially being a team that lost the the first two games, and I don't think are uh, really going to be contenders this year. Uh, Pittsburgh managed to winning their first two games. It'd be interesting to see uh, if Malkin's still on their team as well. I didn't see his name come up for uh, retirement, but we'll have to take a look at that as well. Larkin reaches his 300th goal. And does show that they're kind of in a rebuild, so they might, uh, might go on a skid there. And I don't see Crosby anywhere either. Where's Crosby? That is... Oh, Crosby now... Okay, three and a half star. So he's not even the best player on their team anymore. So Crosby's there. I don't see Malkin. Just looking for the Russian flag. Yeah, I don't see Malkin. Looks like Malkin probably retired then. Let's see if we can bounce back from that loss. And we don't, we get ridiculed right after. 7-2 loss to Ottawa. Tippett scores and uh, does look like we need to change things up just a little bit. Drowsdale's hurt too. Looks like it's only day-to-day -day though. We definitely have to change something of what we're doing because uh, whatever it is isn't working. 2-2 two two after four games is not the ideal start that we wanted. But we might play less games here and uh, more so focus on the the latter half of the season and do a little bit longer uh, portion of that. It does look like Drysdale's ready to start. We'll change up the lineups a little bit. Benson's now there. I do want, I think, so it looks like Ripken's there. So we're going to do the all-Russian line here. Luchenko, I think, can play anywhere, so we'll slot him there. Um, maybe on the left wing, I prefer him there, if we're going to do that. Looks like a decent one. I'm going to move Frost down, though. Let's see if we can beat Boston. And we do. It does work. So 3-2 win. Shootout, though, is what we needed. Um, Terrence Smith gets his first. Luchenko gets his first as well, so doing better on the second line than the first. And then Demidov and... Uh, Ripken and Tippett all get goals. So 3-1 in shootouts. That is a good sign. Not touching that one. But it's crazy that Ripken is already the, the top center. Luchenko definitely lost his spot. But I do think uh, if we can keep that line together, that should be very good chemistry. I wouldn't be surprised if they play uh, internationally together as well. And we'll have to... Switch it up again to make it. Uh, yeah, Luchenko's going to go on the second line. See if we can do this one. 
4-3, so back-to-back -back wins is what we want to see. Ripken doing well, and then Tippett and Seth Jones also getting goals there. We do need another shootout, though. Um, Bert, Demidov ends up missing before Mishkov ends up scoring, and then Barky, Denver Barky, doing so well. I mean, I'm so proud of him. Six games in, we're 4-2. and two. At least we're in, in the positive way, but wow, Pittsburgh is 4-0. and oh. They might be a tough team to beat. I know I, I said that maybe two minutes ago that uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to, to win another championship with uh, Crosby, but I mean, if the start is uh, a start of what's to come, that's going to be, uh, or a sign of what's to come, that's going to be a real threat this year. Um, yeah, Washington, I don't really feel as though is a threat. Four and three is not uh, not that great. Four and one though. Victoria now with the uh, with the Devils. He did play for them last season. Only got 16 uh, points, but uh, congratulations with uh, getting his thousandth game played. That's pretty good. He still had a little bit of juice left, and I'm curious to see how much he signed for. Only three million. He wanted to, uh, I think, six when we were looking at him. But it does look like we're gonna miss uh, Drysdale not uh, not playing. We're gonna start to Kolosov, um, Ripken there as well. Demidov and Luchenko are gonna split. Let's see if we can do this. Win three two against Bedard. Demidov with the second before Michkov with the second as well, and Barky with the second. A bunch of twos. At least we managed to win in regulation. That's also good. But I think once Drysdale is healthy, it should should also improve that. And it looks like he is almost ready to go. We'll just switch up the goalies, go back to Knight, and leave everything pretty much the same. Lose heavily to Seattle, 7-3. The first period is the thing that did it. Um, four goals in the first, and then... <laughs> two goals in the second, so we were down six nothing before coming back a little bit into it. But uh, Tolvin and leaving no doubt, uh, Barky, Michkov, and Ripken end up scoring uh, respectively for that. So we'll end up playing probably two more games and then we'll jump to the trade deadline. But I don't know how active we're going to be. It does look like it's going to be a bit of an uphill uh, season for us. Not as easy as last season, that's for sure. So, it does look like Drysdale should be back. Crosby's now injured for two to three weeks. And uh, that's all she wrote for that. Chicago ends up trading. Connor Murphy is only a one star at 34. That's insane. For Millich, that does not seem like a fair trade at all. But... I don't think it really will matter that much. Drysdale now at 96%, so we will take that. Getting our top D is, is huge. Seth Jones now moved down to the third line. Might be might be a good sign for, for later, but also Seth Jones might be on his way out. We're going to put Benson on the second line. I think we'll leave it there for now. Minus, I want uh, him on the left wing. 4-1 loss, that is heavy. So the only one that ended up scoring was Denver Barkey, shorthanded as well. So does not look like it was a very good game for us. Back-to-back -back now against San Jose. If we can manage to get the win, hopefully we can avoid being 500 uh, going into uh, to 10 games in the season. And uh, Spencer Knight showing that... Uh, he is mortal, and uh, Frost is now on the top line, but I think that's just more so for rotation. Luchenko, I'm going to swap onto the second line there. See if we can manage to get a win. 5-1, so that's exactly what we want to see. Mishkov with his fourth, Drasdale with his first, Tippett with his sixth, and then Forster um, with his second, shorthanded as well, and then Barkey with his fifth. So 10 games in the books. Uh, Pittsburgh finally suffered their first loss. But in terms of the league, we are sixth in the league. So even though we are a bit hard on ourselves, um, 
not too bad. I, I do see that, that that's about to drop because we've played way more games than everyone other than Capitals. So six and four is definitely not something to uh, to really brag about. But taking a look at the offense, Barky is at the top. Ten points, ten games. That's huge. Tippett with uh, nine and ten. Frost with nine and ten. And Michkov only with uh, with seven. So he definitely needs to improve that. Smith with uh, during his rookie season with five and eight games. Cam York with five as well, and Faraby only with five. Just after we we sign him to a longer deal, he ends up uh, not producing what we need. Um, Demidov only at uh, at four points as well. So we'll take a quick look at uh, goalies as at at this point. Spencer Knight is three and four. Kolosov is three and zero, oh. and they're more or less the same at this point. So we might end up sticking with the hot hand and Kol Kolosov might end up uh, outseeding Knight who has two more years left on his contract. So let's jump to the trade deadline and let's see where we're at there. As the trade deadline nears, we do find ourselves in first place, not only in our division, but also in the league with a decent amount of points. We are leading the Maple Leafs and the, the Red Wings, um, maybe leaves just by a bit, but they have a couple games at hand, so they should be able to, uh, they'll probably end up passing us at some point, but uh, that's not even the important part. The important part is that Michkov is in the race for most goals, which is huge, considering he hasn't uh, really shown anything like that in the past. 42 is not good enough for, uh, for top eight, but uh, so far, he's in the top eight. And I couldn't be happier. It's definitely good for his progression. He is starting to to progress, and currently it's on the wrong player. Um, yeah, thir sorry, 36 goals this season, and 39 uh, assists in 67 games, which means 75 points. That's pretty good overall. And um, I mean, also, let's not uh, let's not forget Spencer Knight with uh, 34 wins and even a 918 save percentage. Uh, he's played 48 games, only 10 losses, and four shootout uh, shootout losses or shootout wins. Maybe I'd have to take a closer look at that. Not sure what the shootout thing is, so it could be overtime losses. Uh, it's showing three overtime losses. So yeah, it is that. I don't know why I would say uh, say shootout specifically, uh, but taking a look at uh, who's available in the trade block and it doesn't look like anyone obviously we'll hit continue a couple times to kind of look at that to get a better glimpse of that four nothing win there uh, Noah Cates, Gendron, uh, Sandheim and uh, Barkley all getting goals there getting it on the the power kill is pretty good we'll take a look at uh, how well our team is faring there's only uh, maybe a handful of games left uh, so 75 points with Michkov, Tippett with 71, and he's kind of uh, going everywhere, so he's not even really starting um, on the top line for the most part. Uh, Luchenko with 58, so a little bit uh, a little bit worse than what he did last season. I would say he's only projected to do 69 points, um, but he's kind of moving around on the first and second line. Uh, Farabee with uh, 48 points, um, not as good as what he used to be, and then Drysdale as well. Fairby 28, and doesn't seem like he's uh, doing as well as what we'd hoped. Uh, Bark Barky, uh, 45 points in uh, 68 games. He's projected to do this just a bit better than what he did last season, which last season was amazing. Um, Terrence Smith, during his rookie season, getting 44 points in 63 games is is huge. I mean, not much of a defensive uh, player, but uh, he should hopefully improve that. More of an attacking defenseman, but none of these are really figured out yet. So hopefully uh, he can develop still around one star extra that he can he can go up. Uh, and we're really hoping that that happens uh, this season. Uh, 43 points for Demidov. Could do 51, but that's a little bit less than last year. And uh, I think we'll probably try and put him on the top line sooner rather than later. Uh, Ribkin with uh, 41 points in 66 games, which is pretty good for a rookie all in all. Uh, taking a closer look at uh, our goalie stats. And uh, Kolosov has played 
23 games with 11 wins, 7 losses, and 2 overtime losses. And kind of moved down to an 8 uh, 98 save percentage and uh, goals against is 3.03. But uh, Spencer Knight taking over completely. Uh, even though they have very similar ability and potential, he's just edging it just a little bit. And uh, we obviously are going to try and play him as much as possible. But I think playing less games has definitely contributed to, to him doing well. I think he'll probably end with no nothing more than 60. Um, but we'll keep looking at the trade block. I don't know if um, if there's going to be really anything uh, that really jumps out. Because uh, throughout this whole season, no one's really added anything to it. Other than kind of prospects. So I know closer to the deadline, they do start uh, showing a little bit more. Uh, Tony D'Angelo. So it looks like at least a couple teams are. And yeah. That's a huge difference between one day and the next. Marco Rossi is, is definitely a player that I would want. Kuzmenko, 32, a bit too old. Jack Quinn, I've always liked as well. He is, he, he's more of a counterattacking. I do like that. All these, all these players look pretty decent. Morozov, Colangelo. Do you think we still need a little bit of depth on defense? Carlson's, geez, he's 38. That will go downhill quick. How many years left? He has his last year, so he's probably going to retire after this. But it doesn't feel... He actually went to another team. I was going to say, it doesn't feel right taking this player because he should have stayed with uh, Washington his whole career whatever reason, and ended up leaving for a bit and then went back. Riker Evans could be a sneaky play here. Rushing defenseman, we don't really need those. Not at the moment, at least. Sean Dersey also. Day-to-day -day with broken collarbone. Somewhat, somewhat decent. On a one-year contract, he is open to going to us. Huh. Basel. Defensive reads pretty good. Could improve still. He is 25. He has two-year contracts. Could be good. So we're looking at Columbus and uh, Columbus, Utah, and uh, and yeah, Minnesota. So Zegers is also available. So we'll look at Anaheim as well. Kind of doubt that we're gonna get uh, Zegers. But no reason we can't see what we would have to give up. It's probably Mishkov or no one. So obviously they're not going to budge anything on that. Let's look at Minnesota as the next one. Rossi. And what's it going to take? Again, just an overly expensive player. Uh, Utah is the next one. They also have the other again lot too. It would be nice to be able to pair up the brothers. 36 points in 65 games isn't ideal, though. We're looking for Sean Dersey. So they're, they are at least willing to budge, but we're obviously not going to give any of those players. Um, we're more so doing it for depth. I could give up Kate's. Um, Andre, we could give up as well. Who's on a very similar contract. They don't budge from that. They want Misa as well. Fourth round pick. Alright. So we end up getting Sean Dersey there. Let's see, who else did we want? Oh, that's probably why I didn't. I wasn't on the trade block part. Sfozil. All right, what team? Columbus, it looks like. All right, we'll try and trade Columbus.
As long as we don't really have to give up that much for him. Fozil. Personally, I don't know why they want to to get rid of him. And they're willing to... Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to cost us that much. Terrence Smith. I think we can probably give up a prospect for him. Uh, Javecki. Yeah, they'll probably do it even for him. So we'll give him Dravecki and um, maybe Rue Owen. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play for us. Really, I, they, it seemed like they were willing to do it without even adding the other one. We'll give him a sixth. And we end up getting two players there. Should end up making it a little bit better. I think we're pretty much set on offense. So we'll have to move two players down. And they kept Sposal. So who did we move down? Spencer Gill ends up going down. And I can't remember who the other one that we end up losing now. But we end up bringing them both down. Frisia is still looking like he could develop as well. I'm not exactly sure who we brought down, but it uh, does seem to fit. But uh, Bruce Collarbone, hopefully he'll be back soon. And we'll look at what the lineups kind of look like. Smith and Sandheim and York on the left. And then uh, Drysdale, Jones, and Svazil. So it looks like we brought down our other defender as well. So not too bad. Gendron's the only flex uh, four that we end up having, but it uh, does look like we should be able to take on Washington here. 2-1, I will take that all day. They have Cole Hudson, though. That would have been a nice pickup. He doesn't look like he's developing as well as what uh, he probably should. It's Demidov with his 16th goal, shorthanded, and uh, then we end up winning in the shootout. Faraby with the game winner. Uh, Benson also scores, though, as well. So it does put us to 99 points. There's only around a handful of games left. Uh, but I don't think we're going to make any moves uh, in the trade deadline. Uh, we could possibly get rid of uh, Cates and stuff, but I think we might just let uh, let him leave. Same thing with Lawton, and just uh, kind of accept it. Unless there's someone else that we can get. Look at our contracts first. So Lawton is probably leaving in Cates as well. Cates isn't doing that great this year. 65 grade, but uh, points wise, I mean, pretty much bottom, bottom what you expect. Let's see what he wants though. Still wants 4 million. I don't think we can afford that. We'll take a look at the off season, but if we can, we'll try and trade one for one actually. So if we can get a player that's kind of similar to him, forward-wise, uh, I don't see it. Arvidsson would be it, but he's too old. I want a player that we at least have maybe one year on as well. We're now getting into a category where he's a little bit better than these players. Gunler. No. Yeah, I think we'd only be able to get rental player, but I don't even know if it would necessarily be an upgrade. Not unless it's there, they are a full full three-star. Carter's still too old. I would want the option of having a player again for next year. So I guess we'll just have to look at the uh, contract situation after the season. And then look even at our prospects that are coming up because uh, yeah, Cates could just go in free agency, which is all right as well. We we definitely will need him for this off, uh, for this playoff. So better not to get rid of him just for the sake of it. And our owner ended up requesting us to do something as well, but uh, I don't think we should sign a local player just for just for the sake of it. But Jersey should hopefully be back in the next couple of games. 
trade deadline yet. We don't. We're okay with it. And we'll kind of leave it as is. Lawton now being the flexed uh, player. 8-4 loss to Rangers is not a good uh, good look. Uh, we do get goals from uh, Tippett, Demidov, and Ribkin uh, with two, and then uh, we just fell apart after that. So maybe a little bit more rotation need needed. 12 more games left in the season, and uh, we're hopefully just going to get this done with uh, not suffering too many injuries. I think we're pretty crystal at finishing at least top spot in the division so it seems as though playoffs is almost guaranteed but uh, the only thing you can really do is is mess this up still surprised to see um, Tampa with so many players uh, all exceeding what I would have expected from them it does look like Sean Dursey's here to play now and it looks like Sfozo will be the flex guy for us who can come in um, at any point so not too bad for that and then yeah Lawton's not really playing that much this season I think he retires after and uh, Gendron I don't even really know why he's still on the team just because he's uh, he's a bit old I guess or not old just uh, not developing the way that we'd want him to 6-5 loss there that's a bit tough and overtime Mishkov with his 37th Terrence Smith with his 11th and Barkey with 22nd Frost with his 12th and then Dursey ends up getting on the score sheet too for us so not a good not a bad start for him we do get uh, 100 points though and three more wins until we end up eclipsing 50 for the second season in a row um, but I do think we might have to hold off on night playing uh, more games and uh, we end up being an accolade for Aho, so he ends up keeping the puck for that one. I think the only thing we're going to change is our goaltending for the Detroit game. And clearly that matters. So Faraby ends up getting, and then two uh, Michkov goals, but not good enough to pass against uh, Detroit, who, who are at least in the top of the division. But uh, there's a huge gap here between us and Columbus. 19 losses isn't too bad, I will say. 10 more games we do face against uh, Toronto. And Knight's going to get the nod here as well, even though I want to rest him as much as possible. But a 4-2 win there. Uh, Kate's getting a goal and Farabee as well with two, and then Michkov with his 40th. So Michkov, Michkov closing in on top five that's uh that's pretty exciting oldie there cal cal connor i don't know how perot's there if it's the same perot that i'm thinking of i guess we'll leave everything the same lose five four in overtime jersey gets a goal there demidov and uh Faraby and lachenko but ultimately losing in overtime to Boston. Don't really look like they're that much of a threat. Uh, we just keep adding to the points. Does look like we're pretty handily in first place uh, in the league, but uh, we already know what happened last season uh, when we end up having such a good start to that. So Fairby is now hurt, it looks like. And Drysdale is injury prone, clearly. So it looks like he, he might need to be rested as well, but it looks like we have a gap of games over the next little bit. 5-3 win here. Um, Taron Smith, Dursey, Tippett, Dursey again, and Luchenko. Only really scoring the third, so it looked like we were down 3-1 to start the third and managed to come back. Uh, that's the 49th win now. Only one more that we need, but uh, if we end up kind of running the train on the rest of the the games we should be able to uh, have the highest goal or highest uh, win record than what we've had before uh, but it does look like Knight could also get the Vesna. I think his save percentage kind of went down based on one blowout um, so he's kind of got that uh, has gone away from him 
do face Dallas now. Drasdale still at 80%, and Faraby, same thing. Uh, we'll give it to Kolosov. Give him the chance here. <laughs> and 6-2 loss, oh my god. Uh, Kate's getting the goal, and uh, same with Benson. And now Dursey is completely hurt. Now at 46%. So Drysdale and Dursey are both uh, both injured. Good thing we have uh, enough rotation on defense now. I feel so if we didn't end up uh, getting these players, we might be uh, might be screwed. So it does look like they'll take turns on who's resting and who's not. Uh, Ripken. All right, let's swap Tippett and Demidov. Let's put in Benson on the uh, third line there. Misa as well. I do like those lines. They look pretty good. Let's see if we can manage to come away with the victory here. 4-1 <laughs> loss. Smith now with a ruptured testicle. Wow. So Tippett gets the lone goal with his 31st, but uh does look like... Smith is going to be out only two to three weeks with a ruptured testicle. What a champ. We, we wish you well, but uh sucks that we have a back-to-back -back game, and you definitely won't be playing there. Sposal now comes up. Yeah, that's a bit rough. Still one win away of 50, but does look like uh, Colorado is eager to uh, rain on our parade there. Got to switch the goalies. Olsov now with the chance to kind of redeem himself. And he doesn't. He's on a losing skid hard. Drysdale with the goal. Michkov with his 41st, but uh, that is all she wrote. Just searching for that, that, that 50th win. And... Now it looks like it's going to be a race between Colorado. We really need the the wins to start coming, and it's not going to be easy. We now end up having to face uh, Winnipeg here, and it does look like Knight might have to uh, play the rest of the games just to kind of ensure that. I know we don't get more money for it, but uh, it is definitely something that we need to to think of. Demidov now on the top line again. Eight three win. We've, uh, we've managed to lose every game against them, so it's nice to finally get the win there. Uh, Drasdale gets a 16th. Sandheim, uh, Gill, and uh, Lachenko and Misa getting on the score sheet before the third. And then Benson and Ripken and Michkov with his 42nd. So kind of slowing down, but still managing to get that 50th win. And same thing with Colorado. They have 50 wins, but I think our seven overtime losses are going to be the difference here uh, with only three games remaining. Looks like they're going to give Dursey the nod, even though he's somewhat injured. Not a ruptured testicle, but uh, injured nonetheless. Now let's see if we can come away with a win here. 7-4 loss. Jesus. Not coming easy here. So stuck on 107 points, but it does look like that might... Well, I was going to say might be enough, but uh, Leafs are looking like they're hunting us as well. So that's going to be a bit tough here. Uh, Ripken we're going to put on the top line, and we're going to do the, the Russian line there. To end this out, six three loss. Jesus, we're not uh, we're playing terribly. I think the two acquisitions that we got uh, not not good enough. Stuck on 107 points now. It looks like Buffalo is is going to uh, to win the President's Trophy and get uh, home ice advantage in the playoffs. And we have New Jersey as the last game. Like I said, we're going to lose this one, and now it's without uh, without a doubt that Buffalo Sabres managed to get that. The only good thing is at least we're going to face our division, and our division looks significantly uh, easier 
than the Atlantic. Still ultimately disappointing, I will say that, to end it uh, to end it this way. We end up going on such a good run for, throughout the whole season, but uh, struggle to get the 50th win. And now, now it just seems as though it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle uh, for us to do well in the postseason if, uh, if this is any indication of how it's going to end. Do end with a win, though. So 6-5 win, Misa, Frost, uh, Luchenko, Drysdale, and then Lawton scoring a surprising goal, even though he hasn't played too much this season. Spencer Knight with 40 wins. And we'll take a look at the rest of uh, the rest of our team's stats throughout the season. And Michkov ending with 91, so a little bit better than last season, but uh, four more goals is is definitely a lot. Um, Tippett also with 86, so he's definitely. I'm glad that uh, we kept him around and we didn't end up shipping him away or anything like that. Uh, Luchenko now is 72, so a little bit less than last season, but I still say he he did pretty well um, despite uh, everything. Faraby now a three-star player, 56 points. Trasdell with uh, 55, and then Demidov with 53, so a little bit uh, of a downgrade from last season, but I do think he's going to play on the top line uh, next season. Uh, Barkey with 50, so two less than last year, but one game less as well. And then uh, Ripken in a, is his rookie season ends up doing 49 points. He is now a three and a half star player, and he does start. He is starting to look pretty good. They do look like they're maxing out at four. He was four and a half before the season started, so I know that can all change. Um, take a look at the goalies because I think definitely went down nine ten. So it's maybe not necessarily his fault. We are probably allowing way too many shots. Uh, on him, but uh, in terms of the whole league, we do finish, we only finish third. So, pff, top four teams are in the East, so it does look like East does have the best chance at winning. And it looks like we're probably going to play, uh, we'll have to take a look at uh, standings once again. It does look like we're probably going to play the Canadians as opposed to the Sens, but uh, once we end up if we end up winning, then we do face uh, Columbus or Pittsburgh, which should be an easier matchup for us. And now let's look at the awards. Not nominated for any of these except for the Calder, Ripken, Colby Hay, who's a goalie. He's, he should win it probably. Uh, Liam Ruck with 58 points. It's going to be close, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't end up winning it. Uh, Michkov with the Messier nomination. I don't think he won last year either. 109 points is still pretty good. But uh, yeah, like I said, the skid towards the end is not uh, not the way you want to end up starting the postseason. Uh, let's hopefully let's hope that uh, Mishkov ends up uh, showing up this postseason because uh, we will definitely need that uh, if we want to compete this season. So let's do it. Game one. Uh, throughout the series, we managed to win the first two. Uh, we end up losing uh, the next one. So a three to one series lead here. Let's see if we can manage to win the first game at home. Six to win. That's what I like to see. Faraby, Barkey, Tippett, Barkey again, and then Tippett and Forster all getting goals there. So two goals for two different players, Tippett and Barkey getting the nod there. Columbus leads. I think I'd rather face Columbus than uh, than have a rival. We won't move that because I don't think there's any need for it. 7-4 loss now. Goes back the other way. And uh, Frost getting on the sheet uh, before Barkey and Tippett. And then Demidov getting his first. And now we have our first injury of the postseason. Two, three months torn groin. Prudhomme now playing for us. He hasn't played once this season, but uh, 21 points in the AHL, 71 uh, grade. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that's going to help us. We're going to ignore that. But it's going to be a huge jump. He's probably going to be slotted on the bottom line. 
But here we have Dallas. Looks like they might uh, end up uh, sweeping Colorado. Nashville up 2 nothing. It's tied between uh, St. Louis and LA. I haven't seen St. Louis in the postseason in a while. And then Vegas and uh, Vancouver before Buffalo and Ottawa. Buffalo should win that one easily. Uh, Toronto and Detroit. I think it's going to be Detroit. And then uh, I, I really hope it's us. And Columbus is up 2 nothing. Jeez. We'll end up uh, adjusting AI. See if we can win in Montreal. We don't. We end up losing in the third. They end up outscoring us. Tippett ends up getting a goal. Prudhomme with his first, and then Demidov uh, gets one there before Drysdale does, but not good enough. Down the series 2 1. I don't like having to overcome this. And Terrence Smith ready for contact after his uh, ruptured testicle. 2 1 win there. Forster and Frost end up getting the goal. So again, Michkov not present in the postseason. He really needs to start showing up because that is uh, that does not fly by with me uh, very well. End up going back home here. See if we can uh, manage to get the lead in the series finally. 5-2. It's what I like to see. Cam York, Ripken, Fairby, York, and Barkey. Don't see... Maybe I'm too hard on the kid. Now Tippett is injured. That is going to be devastating. Torn pectoral mus mu ah, muscle. So he's out. So that's going to hurt. He's probably out for the rest of, of the series. Well, not even series, but the rest of the playoffs. We're going to be without uh, one of our big points getters. So it's going to wonder who's going to end up filling in for him. Back at Montreal, let's see if we can manage to at least get the win here. And we do 2-1. So we get out of the first round. Luchenko and Michkov with the only two goals. And then uh, Newhook scores for them in the third. But we still ended up winning anyways. Um, Blue Jackets end up sweeping Pittsburgh. So that's interesting. So we're going to end up facing them. And then Toronto uh, might end up having to beat uh, Detroit there. And then Buffalo wins 4-1. Nashville sweeps. Dallas Stars wins pretty handily 4-1 as well. Uh, Knights look like they're coasting here, and then uh, St. Louis, I think, ends up winning that one. Sanheim now hurt, and yeah, we're we're just uh, we're <laughs> we're absolutely screwed now. So everyone's just dropping like flies. Always the injury bug around the playoffs. For whatever reason, it always seems to happen to us. Smith now. Good enough to play, so that'll be massive for us. It's like I knew that all our defenders were going to get hurt. Now facing Columbus, Buffalo's leading. So Buffalo ended up winning, and uh, Leafs ended up somehow losing there. That is wild. Columbus now. Let's adjust everyone. Throughout the season, we managed to win the first game, second game, and the third game. So that means that they're going to cause us problems now. They're probably going to win game one, but uh, let's hope for different. 5 nothing. so I'm happy to be wrong there. Forster, Ripken, and Forster again before Demidov and Barkey end up scoring. Nashville and Dallas 1-1. Game two here. Four one loss. I knew they were going to win one on us. Mishkov finally scores, but uh, doesn't seem to matter uh, when we end up losing 4 1. Buffalo leads and Nashville leads. And hopefully we lead. Going to change things up again. Go to Columbus. Let's hope for the win here. We do manage to win in regulation. 
it's always positive. Michkov with uh, his third, Farabee with his third and fourth, and then Michkov now showing up. Now he decides to show up, and I am, I am all for it. Buffalo sweeps and tied uh, with the other one. We'll leave it as is. I don't want to touch anything. 6-5 loss in second overtime. That's going to be rough. Luchenko and Demidov with goals there. Uh, Forster and Dursey as well. But uh, eventually, Luca Del Bell Belouz. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Ends up uh, scoring in double overtime. That's always rough. But it looks like the series is tied. Oh, and I forgot Vancouver and uh, company. Spencer Knight is injured. That is not good. Facial, facial cut, 87 fitness. That's ridiculous. And series tied all around. I think Dallas is uh, tied as well, but uh, that thing came up all of a sudden. All right, uh, probably, I guess, Doug Waite. Game there, let's adjust it. Thank God I did, because it looks like it changed. All right, let's see if we can win at home and take this series lead, and we do 2-1 uh, in overtime again. Kate's getting his first, and Demidov getting his fifth. And now Luchenko's hurt. This just keeps coming. Dislocated jaw. 3-2 series lead. And a broken jaw. So we go back to Columbus. See if we can win it out here. Luchenko is still primed to, to play though. But now on the, on the third line there. Let's see if we can win away from home. 4-1 loss. So it goes to game 7. It's kind of how it happened last season. Mishkov with his 5th. And it does look like Luchenko probably won't be able to play the last game. Ties up there and ties up with uh, Vancouver and L.A. Sanheim looks like he's ready to go, but uh, doesn't look like he's probably going to play for us. Luchenko now going to be sitting for the last one. It does suck that Spencer Knight uh, does have that facial cut that's apparently a bit too much for him. Um, I'm taking, yeah, I'm moving Cates down. Uh, I guess we'll leave it at that. Should be good. Smith and Dursey. Drazdale, I feel as though it should be. Swap that up. And we'll leave it at 2A. Game 7 for all the marbles here. We win one nothing. Wow. Benson with the, with the goal like me putting him in that spot made him uh, win Nashville now up and Vancouver up so we end up going to Buffalo now because of how the season ended up ending uh, now it's Nashville and Vancouver so two two teams that have never won and I don't think Buffalo's ever won either so it's going to be a very big big series if we end up losing then it's going to be a new Stanley Cup champion that has never won before. So how the season play out, we end up losing first game. We won the second one and lost the third one. So uh, we go to Buffalo. Let's see if we can manage to, to get the first game out of the way here. We lose 5-4 in overtime, of course. Demidov with his sixth. Barkey with his sixth. York with his third. Demidov with his seventh. And then Cousins ends up scoring the game winner there. So hopefully, even at the series here, looks like Sandheim should be back. Luchenko should be, uh, he's only at 70% now on the uh, third line there. Game two. And a 2-1 loss again. Therapy with the only goal. Down 2 nothing is not the start that we were hoping for. Spencer Knight still played well, though. But yeah, we weren't hoping for that outcome. I mean, Luchenko should be more well-rested than that. does look like they're sleeping on Seth Jones there. He's not going to end up playing. So let's see if we can manage to win the first game at home here. 
and we're down 3-2. This looks like it's going to be a difficult battle. Three, third goal for Frost and first goal for Misa. 3-0 lead. Just don't get the sweep. 2-1 lead. And now Barky's hurt. That is the worst. It really should show it earlier. I think you should have a chance to be able to bring someone up. Look at the lines. We'll kind of switch it up. We'll put uh, Barky on the bottom line. Yeah, there's no way I'm allowing that happen happening here. Um... I don't think I don't think Barky can play there. Kate's gonna have to play on the bottom line there. So for a win here, and we end up getting swept. Didn't think that was gonna happen. Uh, Benson with the goal and Demidov with the goal as well. So it's gonna be new Stanley Cup champion this season. Unfortunately, it comes at uh, at a price of getting swept. So probably going to be Vancouver and uh, Buffalo. Tied 3-3, come on Nashville. Vancouver ends up leading, so I was right. All for naught, so I think uh, it's probably going to be Buffalo. Actually, it's definitely going to be Buffalo. Vancouver leads 1-0. Game two. Whenever it wants to load. Game two goes to Vancouver as well. So 3 0. Oh, geez, it's going to be a sweep now. And a sweep. Congratulations, Vancouver Canucks. You're the 2027 2028 champion after going to three game sevens and then sweeping the last one. That is insane. We'll take a look at how well everyone did in the postseason. I don't think it's going to be as. Good is what I hoped, but uh, I mean, Demidov with 15 is pretty good. Uh, Barky with 11 did suck that he got injured. Michkov only with 10. So that's back to back playoffs where I wouldn't say that he showed up. He showed up in the first one where we end up winning with 33 points, and then the next two are uh, barely there. Um, Kind of disappointing, but uh, his grade was still good, but he just wasn't there offensively. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at the contracts and see if uh, we end up keeping Cates. I feel as though we won't. Just looking at the depth, I think Cern might uh, end up coming up. Yeah, and I think he's very similar to a player that he is, or even, um, or even someone might uh, develop like Stenberg, who can play mainly center, but could convert to, to the wing. He looks like he's going to probably come up as well. His face-offs are pretty good, so I do think that uh, Stenberg might also come up as well. So between the two, I don't know if we're going to have any any space for him. Um, we'll have to move some people on the wing. Even Powell, we might end up bringing up as well. Um, but uh, that's it for that episode. We do have only three picks um, for the next year's draft, so probably won't be that long of a video for that um, but uh, we'll end up doing a quick one for the draft we might even just do a draft re recap because uh, it's probably not worth it to to show just the three draft picks so we'll do a draft recap of that and kind of explain why we got each player but uh, we'll end up doing that episode tomorrow so hopefully you guys like this episode leave a like subscribe if you want to see more and thank you for watching until next time